Hello everybody and welcome back to another one of those videos where I talk about updates in the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress coming from Toady1 and KitFox. We've got a really big dump of different various UI screens. There's a whole lot here and a whole lot to cover. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. The very first one here is called Worker Assignment, and this is an image of the worker UI connected to a specific, uh, the, what's it called, workshop. So in this case, it's a carpenter's building, and as you can see, the, the carpenter's building has a specific worker assigned. Now, one thing that you can do in Dwarf Fortress, this is actually a feature I don't use too often, is when you assign a specific worker to a specific workshop. This is very good for getting specific jobs done and spe at specific qualities, uh, and very, very helpful. However, it's a feature I don't generally find myself using all that much, personally just because I don't find it to be that necessary, at least the way I play the game. But if you're playing in a very min-maxi fashion, this is very helpful. So when you select the, the workshop, uh, there will be a workers tab, as you can see over here on the right. And the worker here that is assigned is a dwarf named Lore, and uh, they're a woodworker. And uh, only one may be assigned to each workshop, as it says beneath that. So I'm assuming if you click that little plus button, it'll replace that worker with a different dwarf from the list. Overall, a nice implementation of this UI. It's way more readable than in the current game, and let's move on to the next one. The next list here is uh, the full uh, y like creature list. So this is just everything that is in your fortress. Now, uh, as you can see up in the top, it says creatures, but they've s selected specifically citizens. So I'm assuming this is the U key currently in the vanilla game. Now, this just shows a full list of all of your citizens, and you seem to be able to short sort by short sort by mood and by job, by name, etc., and by profession. There's a bunch of different filters here. Uh, I know a lot of the things that I've been asking for personally are just more filters. The more filters we can get, uh, the better, frankly. Moving on to the next one, uh, we have the w labor work details list. Now, this is a very interesting screen, so I'm going to have to like kind of work with me here and like try and figure out what this means. Now, uh, this is a screen that I think that we've been waiting to see for a while. This lets you sort by who has what job, uh, and it seems like you can assign jobs from this screen. So only selected do this nobody does this and everybody does this up in the top right that is very interesting so you could just turn on a job for everybody so you could say go to hauling and then turn it on so that everybody does this this seems to kind of be like a nice happy middle ground between therapist and everything else because over here you also have like the little uh check marks down the bottom right so you can just like manually assign job the dwarves to that specific job so in this case it's mining that's selected here on the right you can see which dwarves have mining selected and then you could potentially mass at everybody only selected dwarves everybody or nobody I, I actually i like this way of doing things i think this is going to be a pretty uh, nice solution now i think there's gonna be some people that are going to complain that it's not just the grid format that say rimworld does but in my opinion this is a very Dwarf Fortress-like solution. And I'm not just saying that in like kind of the sarcastic, it looks like shit way. I'm saying that because I think that this is actually pretty elegant for what the game is trying to achieve. Now over here, we have custom details. So this is detailed a little bit. So once you select the uh, task on the on the left, uh, it gives you the more detailed versions of each task. So uh, we are now like in all of like the the kind of expanded view of each of the skills because every single one of the menus has sub menus. So in stone hauling, there's a bunch of different types of things you can haul. Uh, in um, engineering, there's a bunch of different things that they can engineer. Hunting, there's a bunch of different tasks. So that's like the expanded version of that. Now over here, we see more of the labor assignments. So over on the right, you can see the only selected do this as we were talking about a little bit earlier. And uh, you can actually search. There is a little search function that has appeared now. So up in the middle of the screen, there is a search function where you can search uh, for different things as well as, of course, all of the previous assignments stuff that we have seen. I, I really like this menu. I'm not exaggerating. Over here, we have standing orders. Uh, so refuse and dumping and uh, various other things. So the way that standing orders works is it's the O screen currently. It's basically um, if you find this object, automatically do this with it. Specifically with thread is a good example. So they will either automatically turn all thread into fabric or only certain types of thread into fabric. Maybe they'll only do dyed thread or higher quality thread into fabric or no for thread into fabric. The same goes with uh, uh, saving uh, qu certain types of body parts like bones or shells or skulls, etc., to make specific types of crafts out of them. You can get very granular and specific. Once again, uh, this seems just like a what I would expect from their implementation of a uh, the order management. 
Now, next year we have uh, mass stone orders. So this is a screen in the uh, game where you, in the vanilla game, it's it's a it's a very different looking screen. But essentially, what this is is it's uh, what kind of jobs do we want to automatically do with each type of stone? So uh, you can set them to just be ignored, or you can set them to be automatically used and unforbidden. Again, it kind of follows with the previous ruling and seems like a fine addition to the UI, in my opinion. I have a feeling this is one that you're going to see some complaints about. I don't mind it just because I'm so used to the vanilla one and this is an improvement on that. Now, the last screen we have here is the nobles list. So this is the N button in the, in the vanilla game. And uh, currently looks very similar, as I've said in the past, to the vanilla game, honestly. Um, this whole tab is very similar. Uh, to the vanilla game, except it, it's obviously driven by hotkeys and the arrow keys or uh, numpad or whatever you're using to uh, to move around. Um, however, here it's just going to be you click on the plus to add or remove a, uh, a a new manager or chief medical dwarf or broker or hammerer or sheriff or whatever task you need done. Your expedition leader, of course, and then later on your mayor, your king, your queen, and you'll see their demands over there on the right side in that open space, I would assume. And uh, down in the bookkeeper, I think that the numbers there is probably the uh, ac amount of accuracy because you can set how accurate they are and how much time they spend actually keeping track of your stockpiles. That being said, I, I think that that's not how I would have done it. I, I think I, I like the, the more drop-down menu approach that they do in the vanilla game right now where it takes you to a different screen and you can kind of select from one of like five or six different things on the on the list. But I think that this is, again, a happy medium of simplifying the UI. So this has been our first real look at the Dwarven management screens. I, I'm really curious to know what you guys think about this. I know that, like I said earlier, some people are going to want the kind of more grid look from a RimWorld type deal. I personally am very happy they didn't go that route just because I do not like uh, that style of, uh, of uh, management. It, it removes a lot of the need to look at the character, and I think that that is the strength of Dwarf Fortress, following the different characters and personalities around. Uh, but as always, if you'd like to get these in your inbox, sign up to the Kit Fox news newsletter down in the description. And if you want to let me know what, what you think about the UI, please leave a comment and let me know. And uh, if you want to see more of these, there's a huge playlist of them on this YouTube channel. Please support Bay 12 Games on Patreon. And if you would like to support me directly, I have a Patreon as well. You can find that at patreon.com slash blindirl. And I stream five days a week over on my Twitch channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.